Hey guys, welcome to Fantasy Football Assassins, CFL Week 6, and my top play for DraftKings. Last week we came so close to hitting a big with Duke Williams. He had a couple deep end zone looks that um, we were hoping for. Defensive backs made some good plays. Timing was a little off, but those 50-50 jump balls, exactly what they want to use Duke Williams for. And that's what we wanted him for. We wanted him for that low ownership, but also that low cost that he um, that he was last week. So we're going to take that same approach this week, and we're going to try to target someone I believe is going to be low or owned, but also not crazy expensive that we have Kamar Jordans and Zeistras all in the 8,000 range. And that player is going to be B.J. Cunningham of the Montreal Alouettes. Cunningham is one of the top receivers in the game, I believe. Um, I think he's going to be low owned because people are off Montreal's offense in general. But from what I saw last week against Ottawa, Tyrell Sutton was out of the game, one of the top rushers in the CFL. He's going to miss this game again with a calf injury. That changed Montreal's offense, and I believe for the better. That made Durant just kind of just spread the ball around, get it into a playmaker's hands, not force things as much as he was the first couple of games. Just seemed like it was just more of a fluid pass, you know, set up almost backyard style. Here you go. You get open, I'm just going to put the ball somewhere you can catch it and go ahead and make some plays. I think they're going to keep going with that theory. Um, and... I think B.J. Cunningham is starting to become one of the top options for Durant. Now, Durant was spreading the ball around last week, as I said. He loves Taekwon Underwood, loves B.J. Cunningham, likes Ernest Jackson, who's starting to come along. But Underwood is out this week with an ankle injury, so that leaves Jackson and Cunningham as, and of course, Nick Lewis as some of the veteran guys that I think Durant's going to lean to first. Um, we have young receivers. This guy, Eugene Lewis, who's going to come in and take under his spot. He's on DraftKings. We have George Johnson, who's on the outside. Um, he can get some looks, but I think it's going to be Cunningham who takes over that number one kind of role and almost demands the ball from Durant and says, put it in my hands and let me do some magic. And the stats that I've been tracking all year long, um, I give credit to Josh Hermsmeyer of Rotoviz. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Frisco Josh, I believe. I, ho I hope I got that right. But these once one of these guys do amazing things at Rotoviz. Some of the best NFL analytics. And if you're getting ready for your fantasy drafts, or if you want to just get if you become more knowledgeable about fantasy football, I highly, highly recommend checking out RotoViz. It's some of the best stuff out on the internet. But what they track and what they have brought to light is total air yards. And that's all the yards. And if you haven't been listening to my channel, uh, this is what I've been tracking and what I've been preaching the last four or five weeks is these total air yards. And that's taking all the yards that you see, all the stats that are available to you on cfl.ca, but tracking all the incomplete passing yards as well. And that's what I've been doing all week. I've been going into the game by game, play by play, finding all the incomplete passes, tracking the player, line of scrimmage, where the target was, adding all those up for the players, putting it into a spreadsheet, and I've been taking all of um, Josh's kind of his own personal math and his own recipes for success, put them into all these spreadsheets and all these stats have been popping up. And of course, we have cream of crop guys, SJ Green, Kumar Jordans, Brandon Zeistress, all those guys are on top for a reason, uh, but they're also as expensive. And DraftKings knows who the good players are, of course, so they're going to price them accordingly. So we want to take all these great stats, but we also want to look at guys that are 
pretty inexpensive as well. And I think Cunningham fits perfectly in that uh, kind of realm. So he's sitting there at 6,500. And it allows you to go at Mitchell if you want to have some other Calgary quarterback. Um, and that in the Vegas totals for Calgary. It allows you to have Calgary's defense as well if you don't think Hamilton's um, offense is, or you think Hamilton's offense is looking as bad as they do. But um, I think Cunningham allows you that flexibility for that cap space. But with Underwood out, I think Cunningham comes in and is going to be the target monster. I think he's going to be the guy that kind of gets those first down looks, extends plays, or extends drives. Um, his average depth of target is around 12 yards, so he's making those big plays too. Um, what I love about Cunningham is his air yards per game. It's sitting right around underneath 100. Uh, he has a target share of 18%, but also his market share of the air yards is 25%. And that's what I really, really like. I like what basically they're using him for. And so we got Montreal going against Winnipeg. <clears throat> and now we got to look, sit back and look at that game as well. What's that game script going to be? I believe Winnipeg's offense is legit, and I think they're going to do okay against Montreal. They're going to force Montreal to have to have to have this game plan of kind of faster pace. Can't really control the game when they're running. If they're going to have to throw the ball just as much as Winnipeg's going to have to throw the ball as well. Winnipeg's defense. It's pretty good against the run, so uh, I believe it's uh, Rutledge or Rutledge that's going to be playing running back for Montreal. And then uh, I think that's going to be tough for him to get momentum going, and so that's going to force Durant to once again step back, find the open guy, put it in his hands, and let them make the plays. What Winnipeg does also really well is that they have some of the two two of the best defensive backs in the game, and Randall and Heath. Now, the thing about them is that they play on one side of the field, and teams this year have been targeting the opposite side greatly, and they've had great success, and I think that's almost something that teams have been almost copycat, or copying from the um, teams prior, and last week BC absolutely lit up Winnipeg's defense. And Brian Burnham, who I think B.J. Cunningham is going to play that same role, absolutely lit him up. So I think Montreal is going to go into this game and know that they're going to have to throw the ball. They're going to have to keep up with Winnipeg and keep up with that offense. They're going to have to play smart, easy football, no turnovers. And that means short kind of passes that have high rate of catching. None of these force balls or trying to extend plays from Durant. Just hike the ball, step back, find the open guy, put in his hands, easy catch, boom, see what happens. And I think it's going to be on that left side or the opposite side of the field that Heath and Randall play, and I believe they're going to set up Cunningham to move around. And he has that versatility to play basically anywhere in catch any of those balls that he's going to need. So, I love Cunningham this week. I think, as I say, he's going to be low-owned. I don't think people are into Montreal's offense. Um, I think with the Vegas total points um, being one of the lower ones for Montreal, people will stay off that. But I think they're not looking at this opportunity that B.J. Cunningham has and I think he's going to take advantage of it. Thank you guys so much for listening to my top play for Week 6 and CFL DraftKings. You guys can follow me on Twitter at underscore FFAssassins. Check out my website, FFAssassins.com. Best of luck to everyone this week, and I'll talk to you guys next week.